Peace and assalamu alaikum to the Muslims and believers. You know, boys out here trying to pull the okie doke on y'all and a lot of people falling for it, man. It's like I've been seeing okie doke after okie doke and it's ridiculous. If you don't know what an okie doke is, it's somebody trying to play you. It's a 52 fake out, you know, just speaking in different vernaculars. First is what we talked about last week with that whole reparations hearing bull crap. You seen the okie doke they was trying to pull. Even though the grassroots, the ADOS, the FBA, Foundational Black Americans ain't falling for it and are still pushing the narrative, the media set out its magic, its okie doke and moved on to continue aiding in the benign and neglect policy of these politicians in our democracy in general. But now with the democratic debates, you see, they don't really address us specifically unless we being used as a come up. Uh, you know, some say, I, I, I love niggas too, and that's why I'm not going to help them specifically and help everyone. So, you know, that's the whole quell the Negroes campaign, keep them quiet. And now the other tactic they're using to quell the grassroots is to, since they can't ignore them anymore or call them bots, it's to call them other names. This is all being done to prepare for an attack on those of the grassroots. I saw a news clip online where they were talking about reparations and speaking about ADOS or foundational black Americans and speaking about how it's this racist group or xenophobic group who's trying to put others down because they are not born here or they don't have their ancestry of slaves here in America. And this isn't really, this is really not true. We have what we have to do is we have to make this distinction for the case of reparations because it is a specific claim and a specific debt that is owed to a specific people. Now, when we talking about who is ADOS or not, that is what that's for. But also we have to be honest and see that a lot of these immigrants are against are anti-black American. But they pretend they don't understand that in order to insinuate tribalism when many of them are tribalists themselves. But yes, we are forming a tribe. But our tribe is in response to the anti-blackness coming from everyone in the world. And the forming of our tribe is based on justice. You can be an outsider and be an ally to the tribe, but you have to be down with the movement and bring some tangibles or full support. So this news clip was just another way to okie doke the Negro into being like, well, I don't want to be against other black folk. You know, I'm helping white supremacy doing that. No, don't fall for it. Sometimes you have to clear your ranks. It is what it is. It's just like I was saying in my Eid Mubarak broadcast, if you go back and listen to it, where I was talking about how the non-black Muslims, when the black Muslims come together, to have their own little get togethers here and there, they have a problem with it and call us racist and beat us over the head with how Islam is so inviting, but yet they won't take their own advice. It's really just to okie doke us into being subservient to them while receiving nothing than a pat on the head. Thanks for letting us use your neck to step on to get to an even more things that you won't receive. And it's other okie dokes going on too. This whole lift all boats thing with Scamala Harris, Bory Booker, with his baby bonds, Bernie Flanders, with this forgive all student loan debts, they really, they ready to do everything for everybody. Even do specific things for specific groups. But when it comes to the Negro of America, we need to feel wrong for asking for or demanding reparations and other tangibles. What's going to happen with this election is that the Democrats are going to fall flat on their faces and it will be blamed on black people. And we will admit that it was us because there was no tangibles. This really will ramp up the attacks on us on all fronts, as you see they are doing now. So we have to be ready for that. When you start to use the white supremacist game against them and start making too many good moves, they got to come in and make up new rules and issues and you know, all type of crap. You'll see. Another way they pulling the okie doke on us is with this whole Colin Kaepernick thing, in my opinion, man. You know, he's he's a good dude, but recently Nike, you know, I, I really, like I said, I really don't wear Nike anyway. 
It's 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 the name of a of another god, and I just don't like to wear that on my body. But recently, Nike was about to release the Betsy Ross American flag shoes, and Colin told them not to do it because it has racism attached to it. And this is very true. Even now, you have white supremacist groups, what they call the three percenters or something like that, who use that flag to represent them. But this just seems like a whole setup, man. You know, the football season's about to come up. They want Cap to have a nice comeback and bring the black folk back to watching the NFL. It makes Nike look good. It's like it was a whole campaign. It's, it makes Nike look good because they can say, see, we respect you, Nick. I mean, you people. It just seems like marketing to me. I smell marketing all on that. But I just want to know. This is what I want to know. Is Cap going to be kneeling again this year? Because there ain't been no mention of that, really. And I feel like they trying to throw us off of that. But, you know, we will see how that goes. And like I was saying, it's really been okey-doke after okey-doke. 52 fake out after 52 fake out. Hitting you with the wham-bam. You know, now back on the political tip, you see this chick, Zerlina Maxwell on MSNBC, already putting her case out of why black people, black men specifically, are to be blamed if Kamala doesn't win. Scamala. She mentions that basically certain men of color will have a problem with Scamala having a white wife, uh, a white husband, so they won't vote for her. I see what their whole play is now. Their whole play is to make ADOS and those who are down for black empowerment for us as Americans. It, it is to make us into these tribalist extremists. You know, they, they want that BIE to come into play. And that is one way we will be blamed for the democratic loss in this election. But the problem these certain blacks she's referring to, you know, the grassroots blacks, those who are on coal with the foundation of black Americans, the problem we have isn't necessarily, you know, the problem we have with Scamala isn't that her husband is white. Because dudes don't really care about Scamala like that. She's not tight. But the problem we have is her horrible track record and how it affected the black communities of her area negatively. And then we see how she got on, which was playing a side chick. And then, that, that shows you have no moral character. And then we see now she's married to a white dude. So now it's like, oh, okay, we see what it is now. It's just to come up to her. But they just giving you one piece of it to demean us and make us look crazy. Make us look like we're being tribalist and something is wrong with us. But also, Zerlina of MSNBC done had her a, you know, a white b boyfriend too. So... When we see that she's throwing black folk under the bus and then we see that, that she had her white man too, we're like, oh, okay, we get it. She just trying to get her spot. She hoping Scamala will win and she get her spot up under Scamala. So we gonna, we gonna show Zaddy that she's on his team too, you know? Like, stop with the okie dos. We're not falling for him. See, we not voting for people like Scamala because she went to an essence fest and while there, uh, while she was at the Essence Fest, she gonna tweet out, people ask me, do I have anything specific for black people? I smile and say, well, let's talk about the economy. Let's talk about healthcare. Uh, what? That's that wham bam, thank you man. That's that okie doke. See, we not falling for that. You trying to pass off that you down with us, that you're, you're trying to put this ADOSness upon yourself that you're down with us but then when specifically asked about us it's the 52 fake out somebody asked you specifically about black people and now you're talking about let's talk about the economy nigga what we we trying to talk about us so you know it, it diverges it, it divulges into negro babble about generalities and things that will affect everyone but us and will more than likely be given to everyone and not trickle down to us so it, it makes totally no sense and then the other okie doke they were trying to do with this essence fest was that they they're trying to put the wedge again between the black man and the black woman you see how they're over praising the black woman you know the democratic party always depended upon the black women especially 
they, that's that whole wedge they're trying to put between a black man and a black woman. Like, well, since we can't get the black man to vote for us, then we need a black, black, black woman to vote for us. At least we could probably get her. So they're playing to her ego. And this is, this is, I might do, you know, uh, um, a, a, a little small talk about this, but this is how the Dajjal is going to get the women. The, and, and this is how these political people are using it now. This is why most women will follow the Dajjal and they're following his system now because it plays on their ego. We're in this whole worshiping of the mother goddess essence thing. And that is playing on a woman's ego. So she's easy to fall for that and easy to follow that system because it's all about worshiping her and her desire and wants and needs and making her above the man. And a lot of women with this whole feminist culture, which is another Dajjal culture, it has already programmed to programmed them to not want to have a man as authority. So of course they're going to accept being away from the man, but I'm glad to say that many black women now are getting on code and they're not falling for this 52 fake that they're trying to push between the black man and the black woman. But that's also because the black man is getting on code and he's getting his woman and his family on code. So we're all working together and this is a good thing. And you know, I know y'all saw that little panel they had on MSNBC again with Joy Reid and two other house Negroes. And you know, one of the house Negroes was speaking about the grassroots movements of ADOS and foundational black Americans and you know, and the like. And he was saying how, you know, they were, they're not bots, they are real people. You should have seen the look of on Joy Reid's face, straight dead mouth. But the other guy who was listening, if you watch him, he did some quick, you know, uh, Masonic type shooting of symbols, which lets me know this is a whole boule front to try to find some angle to switch the narrative against the grassroots movements in America. First it was bots, now it was birtherism. You know, our voices are getting too loud and they need to assuade their paymasters that they have the situation under control. But Allah is the one under control and Allah does what he wills. And you know, Oh, this whole benign and neglect and ignoring us, it's its amazing how on July 4th, Independence Day, Cali was hit with a big earthquake. If that's not a sign, then I don't know what is. Then the next day, it was hit with an aftershock, and then later, it was hit with another quake. Allah is giving the signs to those who see that their foundation is beginning to shake. It is beginning to crumble. You want to keep ignoring black people. You want to keep ignoring the cries of the people of your country. Allah is going to shake you. You want to commit all these sins. You see, things like earthquakes are results of too many sins of the people on top of the earth. Uh, Ibn al-Qaim said, Allah sometimes gives the earth permission to breathe which is when major earthquakes happen. This makes people feel scared, so they repent, give up sins, pray to Allah, and feel regret for their sins. When there had been an earthquake, some of the Salaf, you know, the old predecessors, they would say, your Lord is warning you. When Medina was struck by, by an earthquake, Umar al-Qatab, may Allah be pleased with him, addressed the people and said, if there is another earthquake, I'm not staying here with you. In Ahmad, Abu Huraira narrates that the prophet said that the hour will not happen until knowledge is taken out. Time passes quickly, earthquakes increase in number, tribulations appear, and al haraj increases in number. And al haraj is unnecessary killing. Also, Allah says in the Quran, say, he has power to send torment on you from above you or from under your feet or to cover you with confusion and party strife and make you taste the violence of one another. That is in Surah 6, verse 65. It is also reported that when there was an earthquake, Umar ibn Abdulaziz would write to his governors telling them to give in charity. And think about it, we not even owe charity, we are owed a debt. Plus adding to that, the corruption that goes on in these lands, we can see why such earthquakes happen. And then they, and then they had like torrential downpours, I think in Washington, uh, a couple days ago as well and you know even even outside of the country even the people of Sudan are being hit with the okie doke they had a ruler there who was harsh for years and years and finally when the price of food started getting way too high they took to the streets to the government and started to protest outside 
Now you have to understand that the people were demanding that first the ruler Omar al-Bashir be removed and power given to the people. And to me, this is how they hit them with the okie doke. This is how the government of Omar al-Bashir hit them with the okie doke. They claimed that Omar al-Bashir was seized by a military coup and the military took over and took Bashir out of the seat of power. Everyone was cheering in the streets and celebrating. You know, Negroes love celebrating. Black people love that. Not seeing the smoke screen they put over their eyes. All they did was basically have a deal. You know, this, this is my opinion. This is all allegedly. They said, you know, they said to each other, well, we don't want the people to revolt. And, you know, majority of the people there are Muslims. So we, we definitely don't want them to try to even start thinking about implementing the law of Allah. So we'll make it look like they getting at what they want. Okay, okay, Omar, you step down and we'll take over and make sure everything will run as usual, all right? So we'll, we'll break you off with a little bit of money, but just, just go away for a little bit. Just go away for a little bit. So the military is doing this, you know, the military is doing nothing but being the new Omar al-Bashir. And the people realized that when they were like, okay, you know, when Omar al-Bashir stepped down, the people were like, okay, now give us the power. And it didn't happen. So the people kept protesting in the streets and the army started to shoot the protesters. So that's proven they're no different from Omar al-Bashir. And stuff like this continued for a while until now they brought in their puppets who are supposed to be for the people. But they're just paid puppets. It's just like over here. They bring out these boule Negroes and they claim they are speaking for the people, for the streets, when they're really speaking for what their masters want. So the same thing is going on over there. Now these puppets have come in claiming they are for the people and have made some deal with the army that they will alternate between the army ruling and the people ruling and holding elections. That's the okie doke, man. That's not going to happen. And even if it does happen, the people will, quote unquote, I'm doing air quotes, elect another Omar al-Bashir and the cycle will continue. But also my question for the people is, why do you want power in your hands? Y'all are a majority Muslim nation. Y'all don't want the law of Allah or, or y'all want to mix it up and have some of the law of Allah and some democracy, some socialism. It explains why you'll continue to get corrupt leaders because you desire Satanism. At the end of the day, if you don't desire the law of Allah to rule your life or to rule your nation, then you desire Satanism. Period. I'm going I'm to try to do a video on that as well. You know, I know I'm saying I'm doing a lot of videos and that's going to be a lot of work, but we're going to get to it. And it's the same here. We keep doing the same thing, voting for the same candidates who offer us nothing. They offer us nothing just just so another person we don't like won't win. That cycle will not end unless we do something about it. And that is no tangibles, no vote. And me personally, myself, I don't even participate in that because it's their game. You know, until you stop ignoring what the black people of America want and are demanding, then there's going to be no tangibles, no vote. This is what is shaking them and having them fumble around looking for an answer to this. When really the answer is to this is just to give us what we want. We just have to continue to stay on code and the impact will be even greater and not fall for the 52 fake out, the okie doke. And speaking of, you know, the wham bams, again, I saw a little clip of an interview with Mark Lamont Hill and Ilhan Omar. And, you know, and Mark brought up the topic of black agenda and uh, reparations, you know, and it, it was just a weird exchange, dog. Like, let's listen to this. I want I want y'all to listen to this right here. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I want to start over. But that's for the commission. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously, you want to look at the data and, and see the study. Right. But at, 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 the, at the ideological level, do you support reparations? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's past time. Yeah. It's past time. Um, and, you know, there... The, I'm an African immigrant, um, and so my um, situation is very much different in, in the way that um, you know my 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 family interacts with the system, um, and and I want to make sure that my colleagues who come from um, enslaved ancestry. Uh, are deciding how that that policy is implemented and what makes sense um, in in that regard, uh, and so I'm in full support in trying to make sure um, that we are taking.
taking full steps in into getting reparations for the blood. Oh my god, now did you hear that? Did you hear that poppycock? That's some bull crap. Okay, now, if you listen off top, it sounds good. But that's how you get God. That's how they hit you with it. But you got to listen very closely. He first asks her about reparations, and she immediately goes into, uh, uh, yeah, I'm signed on the HR 40. She did one of those, she did one of those years. You know when somebody asks you a question, you really don't want to answer it, but you, but you put on the spot. So, you know, somebody blowing up your spot. And she was like, yeah, I'm, I'm signed on the HR 40. Can we move on? We, but we know what HR 40 is about. That's all some fluff. That's just some, that's another okie doke. So, you know, Mark, Mark, Mark Lamont probes deeper and you could just see the uncomfortability and how she was going to, how she was going to figure out how to sidestep and, and Negro shuffle her way out of this one. So, you know, even at some point she had to roll up her sleeves at one point because she was like, whew, okay, how I'm going to play this? Okay. And she gives some general answer because Mark kind of helped her out because he knew what it was. He helped her out. He's a little bootleg negro too she gives some general answer that she agrees with the ideology of reparation but she tries to say she really can't speak on it because she isn't ados and i can respect that but then she goes into how ancestors in general who are slaves they should be deciding on it which means it includes all not specifically ados it includes all descendants of slaves so they should be deciding on it so basically what she did with that response was she brought us back to square one where it sets up for the boule negroes who may have had slave ancestry but let's say from like haiti or from somewhere else and not in the america and not in america it sets up for them to be the spokesperson for us and reparation spokespersons for us and that's how they get us again because these people are going to tell the government we don't need reparations and then what's crazy is she's having this, like she's all coy and scared. And yeah, uh, I don't that yeah yeah. She she having all this tough time rolling up her sleeves, got the Badu head wrap. Where's the incense at? She's she having all this tough time getting her words together to say about reparations and being scared and coy about it. And she's allegedly a Muslim, but she had no problem supporting the lgbt and being out there dancing and sh soft shooing in the streets with them for the parade and and swaying her hips she didn't have no problem being loud with that she was proud and bold for that but when it came to us now all of a sudden yeah, yeah let me uh roll up my sleeves and see how i'm gonna answer this question come on now i don't trust that at all so you know people let's not fall for the okie doke man and it, that's that's all i'm gonna hit y'all with for this week inshallah Let's not forget uh, to all the Muslim brothers and sisters out there. Let's continue to make dua for Shukri Abdi, who they said she drowned, allegedly. But it, we know it's probably some foul business behind that. You know, if you look up her GoFundMe, try to try to give to that as well. So let's make dua for Shukri Abdi. May Allah accept her into paradise as a Shaheed, I mean. And also, let's make dua for Elijah al Amin, who was another brother who was killed over here in America because some racist white dude and to me he was racist because he said he killed him because his music was too loud and it made him feel unsafe come on now so let's make do it for him too and may allah accept him into paradise as a shaheed as well uh, i've been trying to find if he has a gofundme if anybody has that put it in the link in the description or whatever but you know yeah let's continue to make do it for our brothers and sisters we got to be on point protecting each other we got to be on point being ready for whatever may come our way and may Allah protect us and may Allah guide those who are not Muslims may Allah give us an, another you know another week of life another day of life another year of life so we can meet back here again online or wherever we meet I'm out peace and assalamu alaikum this has been Mabia Muslim and Black in America with your host Bilal Abdullah <laughs>